So most of us are familiar with the beauty of music or maybe the beauty of an outdoor scene. If you don't work in math or physics or some related field, it might be a little hard to understand the concept of the beauty of an equation. But the equations that describe modern physics, like Einstein's equations of general relativity or the equations of quantum mechanics, they have a very intense inner beauty and harmony, which is well appreciated by anyone who studied them. And this beauty is one of the things that gives a physicist the passion for physics. To anyone who has the right passion, um, the insights in mathematics and science have a special beauty that's a little bit hard to describe in words, just as it's difficult to describe the beauty of music in words, but it's just as real. And in the case of mathematics, I was personally first exposed to this at the age of 11. I'd liked arithmetic before, but I had no idea of the beauty and depth of mathematics until I was exposed to calculus at age 11. In the best established physical theories that we have now, a particle like an electron or a quark is a little point particle, although it obeys quantum mechanical laws, which make it a little bit fuzzy. If string theory is correct, instead of an electron being a point particle, it's a little loop of vibrating string. The vibrating string still obeys quantum mechanical laws, which is a little bit difficult to describe, and, but mean it's a little bit fuzzy. But ignoring that for the moment, imagine just replacing a point particle with a loop of vibrating string. A loop of string can vibrate in many different shapes and forms, like a violin string or piano string. A violin or piano string has a basic type of oscillation, which gives the basic note, but the richness of music depends on an interplay of the higher harmonics, which have to do with the different ways that a string can oscillate. A single tone sounds harsh to the human ear. A single tone is what you get from a tuning fork. The beauty of a note played on a violin string or piano string depends on a subtle a subtle interplay of the harmonics. Well, in string theory, if string theory is right, the different particles, the quark, the electron, the neutrino, the graviton, and so on, are different states of vibration of a single string. So the different forms of vibration of a string, which give the beauty of music, also give the unity of elementary particles. The elementary particles and their forces are unified because they all come from the motion of one basic string. We work in the framework of a vast amount that's been learned for hundreds of years, which means that we can see much farther than our predecessors do, but of course, we're building on a much bigger framework. So um, most of the time, we're making incremental steps. But even an incremental insight, if one has a new insight, one understands something that wasn't understood before, it's really a wonderful feeling. And it doesn't even matter how big or small it is. It's just a wonderful feeling. Well, first of all, the hardest thing about doing research is to find the right question. You want to find a question that's uh, challenging enough that you'll learn something significant if you solve it, but easy enough that you can solve it. And that's a hard balance to strike, and it takes a little bit of practice before you even start to learn how to strike it. But near the beginning of my career, I spent a couple of years with a passion for a problem that really was too big that had to do with the question of understanding why quarks from which the proton and neutron are made are trapped together or confined inside the atomic nucleus. So ultimately, I had to accept that that problem was simply too big for me at that time. So it takes practice to learn what's a problem where you can make progress. You try to find the balance between something that's interesting and also doable. Of course, there are very rare cases, like Andrew Wallace, who disappears for seven years and proves Fermat's last theorem. But to be honest, that isn't going to work for most of us most of the time, and certainly not for me. If I try to do something for a couple months and I'm not getting anywhere, that's enough negative feedback to convince me I need to find another problem. If fortune smiles, then ideally, we come back to a question later on with more insight. Uh, to do research successfully, you certainly have to be patient. And you have to uh, be pragmatic, look for opportunities where are, they are, not have too many preconceptions about what you want to do at a given point in time. So sometimes one works directly in collaboration with other people. But even when one is the sole author of a paper, the background is always supplied 
by the insights and discoveries other people have made. So if one worked in a vacuum, at least in my case, if one tried to work in a vacuum, one would soon run out of steam. What um, makes the field remain interesting is that there always are new questions and new puzzles that one wants to understand. When I say that there always are pieces that don't quite fit together, that usually involves the contributions of other people who have found some of the pieces that haven't yet been fully fit together. I think it's very important to be open to ideas coming from other people. So even, sometimes I do have a lot of co-authors, but even if one is writing single-authored papers, one isn't directly collaborating, one's ideas will usually get stale if one doesn't remain open to the ideas of other people. And that's especially important, I think, as we get older, to remain alert and open to ideas coming from younger people. There are wide open horizons in science and mathematics as much today as there ever were in the past. There aren't new continents to explore, but in the world of science and mathematics, there are wonderful new things to do as much as there ever were, and therefore great opportunities for today's young people. And if you have that passion, the best life in the world is to be doing research in math and science. We have to hope, I hope that young people come with their passions and want to make a difference.